Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alright, so hari ini uh, saya nak share tentang bibliographic analysis. Alright, uh, how to do it? What is it? And uh, and also a tool that we'll be using that is called Boss Viewer. Okay, so what is bibliographic analysis? It's an analysis of literature. Uh, related to your research topic or research team yeah some people call it a uh, body of knowledge and to do it you need to follow a sequence uh, by using a certain keyword in your research right? or, or research topic keywords okay uh, why do we do uh, why do we need a uh, bibliographic analysis uh, because we want to evaluate uh, what is the current state of development in a in one of our research topic or um, by doing bibliographic analysis, you can measure the influence of a certain publication or research topic, uh, the impact of uh, particular papers or research topic uh, by using the citation of the paper. And also, uh, you can trace relationship amongst uh, the academic journal, the relationship between the university or the organization, relationship uh, between the co-authors uh, all over the world all right so how we will do it uh, we need a tool called voss viewer that can analyze um, using the keywords uh, uh, the countries uh, that the author represents and the journal where the paper is published or the research work is published all right so this is the tool that we'll be using today is called Voss Viewer. All right, you can download the uh, software, all right, it's an open source software uh, uh, from the website that is uh, vossviewer.com and um, is a not a heavy uh, software, yeah. And you can check out on the website to download and uh, explore all the features, all the features mentioned in the Voss Viewer. All right, so what can we do actually with Voss Viewer? Um, so uh, you can actually visualize the influence of a research topic. Okay, for example, the one that I have here. All right, you can see that. Uh, the relationship between keywords of uh, this one is neural network and what are the techniques uh, circling or in uh, uh, nearest nearest to the uh, particular research team uh, you can see that propagation classification is using being done in neural network and is connected to control uh, in research in robotic and also the connection of neural network and genetic algorithm uh, and etc okay so we can see all these keywords are related to each other and the bigger the the circle or the bubble meaning is the more the research uh, in that particular area and we can also uh, visualize uh, topic trends uh, for this example um, we have the keyword uh, Internet of Vehicles or IOV. Yeah? You can see that uh, from 2016, yeah, this area started from 2016 um, uh, in purple color and then uh, the latest uh, will be in yellow color and you can see that Internet of Vehicles uh originate from internet of things that is in green around 2016 maybe and 2019 is currently the current research drop research topic uh, is internet of vehicle and you can see here also blockchain in yellow edge computing deep learning resource uh, allocation is all the research topic uh, that relate to iov or you can say related to IOT in a bigger uh, view of the body of knowledge. All right. So what can we do next? You can also visualize country co-authorship. 
Okay, you can real visualize uh, collaboration between countries if uh, uh, this kind of work uh, is important. For example, in um, maybe uh, in the area of economy, right? So I also this in this uh, in this slide I also provide the link where did I get this uh, image, right? So this is if I'm mistaken in the area of ecology and environmental conservation, right? So you can see here that uh, United States is uh, in the publication, yeah, in the research, uh, in the data that we get from the uh, database. Okay, well, I will discuss about the database later. Um, you can see that uh, United States is the biggest uh, contributor towards the ecology and environmental conservation the research area in that particular work. Uh, and then next is Japan, uh, Germany, Italy, and China. And then you can also see that uh, there's a big collaboration between uh, China and United States. You see this line is quite thick, meaning that there's a lot of connection, meaning that um, the papers is co-authors, uh, the paper, uh, the publish uh, the authors is um, the authors in the paper includes uh, people from China and United States together, right? So meaning that if you publish a paper, and then the co-authors are all the people in your country, then um, you will not see this link getting thicker. Uh, so in the area of ecology and environment uh, conservation, uh, China has a good relationship with. Uh, United States and Japan, but I think the biggest collaboration here is Japan and United States. You see how uh, take uh, the line from Japan to United States, all right? So that that uh, actually uh, uh, constitute how many uh, papers that co they co authors together between the Japan and the United States researcher. Okay. Um, all right, so that's it for visualizing uh, country co-authorship. And then the next one is to visualize organization contribution. Um, this one is in uh, forest restoration, also in ecology. Um, they show that how the university is um, uh, cooperate together, okay? And uh, the research is, the work, uh, uh, you can see here that it's not only limited to the universities, okay? A lot of papers also contributed by the U.S. Forest Reserve uh, in this particular example, all right? And the nearest is uh, University of Colorado uh, and uh, Cornell is also uh, have uh, a big bubble here, meaning that it contribute quite much on the Forest Reserve, but um, the work is not close really related to the US Forest Reserve. The further the the, the bubble is um, uh, meaning the, the 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 less collaboration between them in that particular research area. All right you can do this with was view also. All right so what's what are the sequence to do this right so this is um, a sequence that I've uh, created um so the first one is you need to know your keywords what are your search term uh, or keywords that you will use to your uh that we you apply later in your uh, database right um this is important and how to actually detect what are the keywords that you will use is uh Sometimes when you do research, you have a few keywords, right? Um, that you uh, take from uh, papers. You have your few main papers, and then they will mention uh, at the bottom. Uh, and usually, is in the bottom left, uh, mid, mid left in the paper, uh, right, uh, right below abstract. Uh, they will mention about the keywords uh, or that represent the papers. So those are the keywords that you will be using. So if the keyword is not um, general enough, I mean the words is is uh, not uh, popular uh, among the researcher. So you might find that the uh, papers or the research that you find in the database later that will be used that you will use the keywords is not much. I mean the the, the number of papers will be not uh, not high, 
right? So uh, identifying the keywords, the correct keyword is very vital. All right, the next one is to select a database. Um, I think if you open your voice, if you will, um, we have Scopus, we have Web of Science, and other few um, known uh, databases, right? But uh, for my area in uh, computer science, you we always, I mean, uh, most of the work um, that we publish is in Elsevier. And um, so uh, Scopus uh, database is uh, supported uh, by Elsevier or Elsevier supported by Scopus. But uh, the database that I will be using for the demo is Scopus, all right? So I state that Scopus covers 250 million quality web sources, 22 million patterns, and uh, IEEE is covered in Scopus, and a lot of um, high-ranking journal in the area of engineering and computer science is covered in Scopus. So it depends on your area. So if uh, social science, maybe um, it's not, it's not a uh, uh, Scopus doesn't cover all, then maybe you need to include uh, all the papers from other databases as well. All right, so after you identify the keywords, you select the database, and then you need to refine your query. Okay, you need to refine your search. Um, uh, let's say you are doing it in uh, this month in November, you need to set uh, the, the query terms uh, limit to. Uh, November 2020. You can actually disregard a whole year of uh, work. You can um, remove the same uh, some publication already input in 2021. You can um, exclude uh, a particular year if you want to. Uh, for me, I exclude uh, 2021, and I'll be uh, doing a paper for uh, my work um that we publish next year so i'll need to wait until december 31st or january then only i can do the full public uh, full query on my particular area all right and then of course um you can choose to include only articles you can also choose to include only conference paper um for my work uh, because uh, computer science are a lot of uh, influential papers uh, papers from conference so I need to include uh, conference and articles as well uh, if I'm not mistaken in uh, in social science um, uh, some uh, researcher did mention that uh, papers that uh, only in articles are accepted as a, as a, uh, uh, as a leading um, uh, research uh, team or research work uh, that can be counted for. So they disregard or they exclude all the papers in the conference. So it's up to you. Is this depends on the particular research uh, area. And then, of course, uh, when you do the search, it will also include all the language that the paper is written of. All right. So for my work, I think uh, you have like uh, 10 uh, languages um, that uh, the papers are written with. So I just choose papers that is written in English. And then also because of the paper that uh, from the data that we get from Vosphere, you can actually do a, a, a review paper or you can also do a bibliographic uh, paper. So we don't want papers that uh, doing a review or bibliographic. So in my search query, I will in, uh, will uh, exclude the paper that have uh, uh, the title that have a review and a bibliographic word. So I don't want these papers included in my uh, in my uh, query. All right. So after you have uh, defined the keywords, select the database, and then you do the search. And after that, you need to export the query. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, so if you are doing it using Scopus, you need to know that um, only uh, 2,000 articles is downloaded. Uh, if, uh, only 2,000 articles can be downloaded at one time. Okay, normally what I do, I will show you later. Um, you, I download uh sort sort through the years of publication so if 
your publication, let's say, have a few thousands of documents, and that one particular year, you have like 2,500 publication. So you cannot download uh, using uh, the group in years. You need to find other ways to download it so that uh, it is dispersed. Uh, those 2,500, the 2,500 is dispersed into smaller uh, numbers yeah um, and then after you have download the query all right you need to uh, load the data we will load the data to voice viewer of course you need to in download and install voice viewer in the first place and after installing then you will do the construction and the visualization of the uh, paper all right um so uh before we actually uh start to use the visualization of the analysis we need to create a thesaurus file i will show you how to create a simple thesaurus file and why it is important um <coughs> so um you know some researcher will use um few terms yeah? for example let's say internet of vehicle some uh, researcher will only put internet of vehicle some will put iov some will put internet of vehicle in bracket iov so this uh, different different um, name or uh, keywords that they use is actually pinpointing to the same uh, keywords right so we can combine this uh, these numbers of word uh, work into one uh, keyword using a thesaurus file. I will show you later how to create the thesaurus file. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, after, create, after you create the thesaurus file, you can load the data again and now with the thesaurus file so that the, 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 the research of the work is more refined. All right. Um, after that, uh, you can start to do your visualization and analyze the data accordingly. So these are the eight steps that we will go through today. All right. So this is the end of uh, part one of our bibliographic analysis uh, example.